Hello, I'm, Do I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. And today I'm going to talk to you about this very, a very important case and that's empty follicle syndrome. And empty follicle syndrome challenges us frequently and in fact gives us a lot of troubles. Now let me put it this way. I, do I believe in empty follicle syndrome? And I say, no, I don't. And I don't believe in empty follicle syndrome. And there's a reason for this. And the reason is that it's like, it's like a, a final statement. And once you give a final statement of an empty follicle syndrome, there's very little to go back and start to inve investigate the matter. You've said there is nothing. And in nothingness, you cannot investigate anything. So let's say there is no such thing as empty follicle syndrome. And it is a failure of drugs or failure of the organ eliciting a response. And I'll explain my concept to you based on this case. Now, this case was a 27-year-old lady in an AMH of 2.5 nanogram per liter. IUI was tried earlier and an unruptured luteinized follicle was seen 36 to 48 hours later. And then IVF was done and menopure was used an antagonist protocol and follicles were stimulated when they were, were 19 and 20 millimeter and I believe that they were triggered on day 11 at analog trigger I gone up decapeptyl trigger was done and 34 hours later eggs were collected the LH test 12 hours later was showing that it was it was positive with a high LH level now the the, the same uh, another case sent by the same doctor was a 25-year-old lady with polycystic ovaries who had been treated for tuberculosis, three failed IUI cycles with unruptured follicle, and IVF was done with menopure for nine days, and I believe that the trigger again was done on day nine between 18 and 20 millimeter, and again, a decapeptyl trigger was given, 34 hours later, eggs were collected and the follicular fluid uh, showed only one germinal vesicle. So here I'll, 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 I'll put it into a slightly different perspective and let, let's have a look at it. Unruptured luteinized follicle, and th that's one discussion. And why do we have you not got eggs and is another discussion. Again, with unruptured luteinized follicle, I think you'll need to move away from scanning somebody 48 hours after the trigger. And there's a reason for this. Now, let's have a look at how the HCG works. And HCG does not disrupt the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian loop of LH surge, which basically means that you may, you may give a trigger and the ovulation may happen at 37 hours, but certain follicles may then release their eggs at 40 or 45 hours, which are smaller in size, which basically means there is no overriding effect of HCG that occurs. So the very simple question is that, how do you know it's some wretched luteinized follicle? And, and it's a very simple thing is, why don't you do a progesterone test seven days after ovulation? And if it's low, then I'll say there's a problem in the luteal phase and that problem in the luteal phase can be then pinpointed to the corpus luteum. So let's not call it unruptured luteinized follicle because what it does is it again creates a negative and negatives do not improve your understanding. Let's call it a defect in the luteal phase. And a defect in the luteal phase is either a defect in the corpus luteum or a defect in the endometrium. A low progesterone is a defect in the corpus luteum and this causes a multiple. And we'll talk about that at some later time, but that's the way have a look, think about it. The second thing is, does the analog trigger not work? And the answer is yes, there's a failure rate and we think it's 3.5%. And then you'll say, wow, that's a high failure rate. In fact, HCG2 has a failure rate of 2 to 2.5%. So it's not very much out of the normal for this. So let's again have a look at this and say, well, why does it happen? Now, let's go back to stimulation. And the first question I'll ask is, how long were the woman's periods? If she has a 30-day cycle, if you look at the follicular phase at day 16, and both these times it is interrupted day 13 and day 11, which means a trigger may have been given early. It is a length of stimulation that is as important 
or rather more important than just the size of follicle. Now, the follicles increase in size for entirely different reasons, which is not linked to nuclear maturity. And that's, again, something important to understand. So what does the analog trigger do? And the analog trigger does a few things which are unique. It, rele it releases LH and releases FSH. And you need FSH? And the answer is yes, you do need FSH to a certain extent because in nature there's an FSH rise along with LH rise. And what FSH may do is it stimulates the plasmonogen activator in the granular cells. And there is an active collagen that disrupts the follicular wall. There's expansion of cumulus cells, reforms an uh, oocyte cumulus mass. And I think it is needed for that eventually rupture. And I think it's, it also allows for a better maturation of eggs. And if you have a look at studies which come out on the quality of metaphase 2, I think there's, there is some evidence coming out that the unlocked trigger produces better metaphase 2 oocytes. Now the question is, is there any other way you could have tried this? And I'll, I'll, I'll suggest some alternatives. So number one is trigger and do what evidence suggests is collect eggs between at 35 and a half hours to 36 hours. That's because there are certain women who respond quite poorly to the analog trigger and have a varied response and this has been proven. The second thing is try and do an FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone. And we are doing a very major study at our institute, which and I, I think we have got the key. And I think I believe in something which we will prove. LH tells you that the trigger has worked. It's the FSH and progesterone that tells, tells you whether you will get eggs. And there's a reason again, because with the rise of LH, luteinization of granular cells occurs, and the progesterone is one way of picking it up. Again, I'll say go back to the basics, the very basics that will help you to understand why some triggers work and why some triggers don't work. So that is in summary of the analog trigger. I would hope that you'd use it more often and I'd hope that you'd be able to try and see whether it works and try and, try and tabulate how you get X. So in summary, I'll say use a trigger, measure your FSH, LH, E2 and progesterone. And secondly, get it closer to 36 hours where your chance of getting mature eggs is better. Thank you.